When we're using git, there are really two ways we can do anything with a repository. And just so I don't jump too far ahead here, I'm going to open up an open source repository here called Wagtail. Now a repository is simply a place where all this code is hosted. When you see code like this on GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, this is called a repository, or a repo for short. Now if I wanted to get this code onto my computer, I have a few different methods of doing that. I can either download the zip, which is sort of the old school method way of doing it, or I can use git. Now there's two ways to do this with git. I can clone via HTTPS, and anytime we try to make a change, or it has to validate who I am, it's going to ask me for my username and my email address. That's the username and email address that you signed up for using GitHub. Now that's fine, but we're going to be doing a lot of Git work, and that's going to get extremely annoying. The second way is using SSH, which basically creates a key on your computer, just a signature, if you will, and it says, I am who I am because I had to go and manually create that key. And then we're going to add that key to GitHub so that GitHub always knows that whenever we try to execute some sort of command, that, it, that we are in fact validated. We are who we are. This is a way of validating your account through the command line. Now, in order to do that, we need to type in really just one command, ssh-keygen-o. It's not a zero, that's an o, a lowercase o. Now, if you're on Windows, you're going to want to make sure you're using git for Windows and type this. Otherwise, if you're using a different program, you're going to possibly need to run something slightly different. If you're on Mac or Linux, this command should work right out of the box for you as well. So go ahead, hit that. It's going to ask where we want to save this file. I just hit enter, put it right into my .ssh folder. This root part's going to be a little bit different for you depending on your computer and operating system, but it should go in your .ssh folder. Enter your passphrase. I'm not going to give it a passphrase, so just hit enter. No passphrase again, hit enter. And now I have an SSH key. Now this all looks pretty gross, and this actually is not the SSH key itself. What we want to do is cat this folder, right? This file, actually. So let's go ahead and copy that. Now that might be different on your computer. If it is, just copy and paste that. And we want the id underscore rsa dot pub. That's our public key. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take all of this and we're just going to copy it. Now let's go ahead and open up GitHub one more time and let's go into our account settings. Go into your SSH and GPG keys and click add new key. Now I've got all this blurred out because I have private keys and I don't want even fingerprints being exposed publicly because I've got some stuff that I want to keep private. Now I'm going to add a new SSH key in here and just paste that in there. That's all I did. Literally just copy and paste. And I'm going to call this git for everybody slash git essentials and add that SSH key. Now if I scroll down the page, you can see that my git for everybody slash git essentials key is in here. It's got a fingerprint and the date that I've added it. It's also never actually been used. So you're going to want to go ahead and do that as well. Now, if you don't have access to that cat command to basically print out your file, you can edit that file any other way. You can open it through your folder directory. Just remember that .ssh will probably be a hidden folder, so you'll need to show your hidden folders. But really all you need to do is open that file that we created, copy and paste it into GitHub, and now GitHub knows who we are. Anytime we type a git command and it wants to authenticate us, it wants to make sure that we are who we are and that we're not lying about who we are, all we have to do is add that SSH key. Now if you cannot add an SSH key, if that is a problem for you on your computer, what you can do is instead of using SSH, you can use HTTPS, and you can actually see that the URL changes here. It's git at github. Dot com, or if we use HTTPS, that's HTTPS github.com, and then it's a regular URL. So if you are not using an SSH key, if that was a problem for you for whatever reason, you can continue to use HTTPS, and that's totally fine. It's just going to ask you for your username and your email address every time you want to do something. But by no means should this slow you down while you're taking this course. Once you've got your SSH key in there, or you've decided to entirely skip this step, let's head on over to that next lesson.